Let's start. Yes. Good morning. Uh, dear Professor Laurani, dear Antonino. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to introduce Professor Antonino Laurani from the University of Catania, the university where he started at and where he is currently a full professor after having been at the University of Roma III for more than 10 years. More than oh, yes, 13 years. After 13 years, okay. Uh, Professor Laurani has a PhD in electronic engineering and is an expert in different fields of engineering, such as electromagnetism, where he completed his doctoral thesis, photovoltaic energy, where he has one of the best algorithms in the literature for modeling the characteristic curve of a solar panel together with uh, Professor Francesco Reganti Fugine, who is here with us, and Artificial Intelligence, where he has a unique algorithm in the world, also develop, developed together with Professor Reganti Fugine, capable of learning in real time, for example, from a pianist and playing a version of a piece together with the musician. In 2019, we had the honor of seeing a live demonstration of, of this algorithm of this algorithm here at the University in Miguel de Francia. Professor Audani is a researcher of recognized international prestige. This statement is supported by his uh, one, so 168 publications according to the Scopus database with uh, more than 2,400 citations and, uh, and age index of 26. I would also like to highlight that he's a secretary of the Electrical Science Group of Italy, and uh, which is a high, highly re relevant uh, scientific position in, in Italy. Well, during this week, uh, Professor Laudani will enjoy a research stay at our University Institute Center of Operation Research. Uh, held by the by the Prometeo project, who is financing uh, this stay, with the collaboration of the uh, CEO, uh, the institute, and the Department of Statistics, Mathematics, and Computer Science. And I would like to thank for the support that have offered us. And finally, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Professor Laudani for agreeing to come to the Miguel Hernandez University of Elche to, to share his knowledge and uh, with the photovoltaic modeling research group and I hope that uh, his, visit, his visit will be very fruitful for everyone. Finally, I hope that the audience will enjoy uh, his talk uh, very much. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for coming and uh, at Fosy uh, too. Thank you. Clearly, I thank you, Javier, for his attendance, for his uh, nice presentation. Uh, I hope to be uh, to have uh, with you an uh, uh, interesting uh, exchange of data, of information, and of knowledge. Uh, today, we I want to speak about the modeling of PIGU, the this photovoltaic system. Uh, I am a bit expert of the of this. Uh, on this issue, and uh, we want to discuss uh, the the energy distribution system, and that is how the energy is uh, uh, generated. But uh, the discussion go from the device to the renewable energy communities that are a uh, paradigm of energy use that uh, is very important for our future. Uh, the overview of the presentation, we discuss uh, a bit about the modeling of photovoltaic system and uh, we look at the circuits that are used for the representation of the generation mechanism and that then are used for the modelization and for the building of the um, convention chain modeling that is uh, useful for exploiting this generated energy. There will be a bit of discussion about the nonlinear models that can be used for building integrated photovoltaics. That is when we want to use the integration of the photovoltaic system inside building. And uh, then the last one, the, a bit, a very small discussion about the use and the 
budget of uh, renewable energy communities. Okay, model B of PIVU system. Very, uh, we know that uh, we live in a situation where the, uh, we have to change the paradigm of energy generation. We cannot use more fuel and uh, not renewable source, but we have to go uh, through the use of renewable sources that are essentially the solar energy, the, the wind energy, and the other energy related. It, these uh, need an uh, exchange in the uh, policy that we use uh, the exploitation of this. Uh, of this uh, source, but also we, we need to a uh, better exploitation of the the way we use energy. This is uh, because uh, the uh, another way to call these uh, renewable energy sources is uh, not programmable source. That is, we don't know when there is the solar. We don't know when there is the wind, and so we have to use uh, some strategies to, uh, to help us to explore the source when they are not available. For example, today is uh, not a good day for solar energy. In order to do this, we need to develop models. That is, we need to have the uh, mathematical description of the problems in such a way to help engineering to develop their uh, uh, more the uh, project and uh, to improve all the uh, realization approach. So the modeling of the blue system is uh, the a key factor for uh, the developing of this uh, uh, new paradigm in the exploitation of renewable resources. What the, what about the modeling? About the modeling, we have essentially uh, some. Uh, Real possibilities. That is one. Uh, one, uh, one is the possibility to use electrical circuits to uh, represent uh, the device. That is, in a specific case, to use some uh, uh, circuits that are well established, and we will see later, and uh, to achieve the parameters that describe this series by, by using all data sheet that is uh, information about um, commission by manufacturer or from the settlement done in, uh, in a real case. Clearly, we can also exploit the simulation software, that this simulation software that uh, estimates the production of energy, taking into account some uh, uh, data that is available from satellite, for example, or from uh, database. This is the case of PPGs and the case of energy plus. This is a uh, system that allows us to estimate the energy inside a building, taking account the thermal effect too. The other possibilities is uh, to use artificial intelligence that is very uh, common today, that is applied uh, some specific algorithms of artificial intelligence in order to recover data and uh, to exploit models. Uh, today we discuss about uh, all the electrical circuits uh, solution and some uh, discussion about simulation software. We don't discuss a lot of, about uh, artificial intelligence because in, uh, for this kind of problem, uh, we see that uh, if we have a accurate model, we don't need to use artificial intelligence. That is, the, accurate, the model we have are so accurate that we can avoid to use artificial intelligence that is a black box without any information. Clearly, for some problems related to the energy management system can be uh, where there is a lot of variables, for example, for thermal problems inside the buildings. We see that it's uh, more easy to develop an uh, uh, artificial uh, intelligence based approach with machine learning instead to use uh, a model. But for photovoltaics, uh, we are very uh, lucky because there is the possibility to 
have uh, efficient models. But uh, another point that is uh, important to understand when we look at uh, the model is the technology used to build the uh, to build our the devices. So we have a look at that the technology can be very different. We are uh, historically we have a silicon based prototype system, but today we have very other technologies that are used and that impose also a new paradigm in the uh, modernization. So when we look at a modernization problem, we have to look at the technology. We have to look at the size of the problems. That is, if we want to describe the photovoltaics effect, you know, that is at the cell level or at the level of modules or a level of plant. Or in the case of plant, if you want to use some strategies in order to change the connection with the models and to create an optimization algorithm in order to evaluate and exploit better the energy. The third problem that is extremely important is the, the integration with the electrical grid, with the storage system, and with the renewable energy communities, that is the other point. So we try to discuss some of these points in uh, this uh, our discussion. Look at the electrical circuits for pilot generation here. Yeah, we clearly know that uh, the origin of the <laughs> problem is the Maxwell equation. So if we start from the Maxwell equation and we image the reprogramation you know, as problem, we know that we theoretically we are able to describe the problem. But uh, this is an, an approach that is not useful from the synthetic information point of view that an engineer is able to manage. So we know that if the size of the device is very small with respect to the, uh, the length of the wave, we can use a lot parameter approach and then we can translate the physical problem in a circuit. Clearly this is, we, means that we can exploit the um, Logo Kirko for about the current and about the voltages, and so we have some uh, mathematical instrument that are able to solve the problem. What are the uh, two points of view that we have to take into account? A point of view is a direct current model, that is a model which describes the measurement of current and voltage with respect to some specific. Uh, um, conditions that are related to temperature and irradiance. But this, can, this model are useful to await the power generated by the, the system, the photovoltaic system, are useful to understand the, the, some mechanism related to the operational point. So what is the duty cycle to use for the compassion? And so, but it's not the only point of view that we have to take into account because we have also a C model. C model you have to understand are small signal models for the uh, old device that is not taking into account a static curves, but taking into account small variation in the curves. Clearly, the math is important to solve both problems. That is the identification of the parameters we are involved and the parameters here involved that are in some cases not related. So we have to follow up uh, an analysis that is really simple for the DC models from the point of view of measurement, because the equipment for the measurement to, uh, to build uh, a DC model is very easy. It's more complicated to do the same things for the AC model where you need, you need the aspect of meter analysis. So we will uh, take some point about this. About the circuit model that is uh, starting with the, the one of related on DC model. About the circuit model, we have to take into account that we have the possibility to the model 
just from the simple one to the more complicated one. The simple one is the one diode model, that is uh, uh, the one here show where there is only a diode in order to represent the circuits. So the name is related to the number of diodes present in the circuits. But there are also double diode model and the multi diode model. What is the difference? The difference is related to the technology uh, that uh, we have we need to describe. So one diode model is a good one for almost all the technologies available. The double diode model is better for specific technologies. Multi diodes are better for specific technologies. So it's uh, just uh, the more general one, but uh, if you need to describe better the device, you have to choose other models. So there is a relationship between circuit models and technologies. Technologies, we can uh, consider silicon based technologies, that is the traditional one, but it's also the older one. Today we go towards other technologies, for example, the bifacial semi transparent technologies that are always based on silicon, but are realized by taking into account different sides in the uh, models. And so we have a different uh, shape in the equation, in shape in the uh, characteristic, characteristic curves, and so also different uh, parameters. In order to make just a, a direct understanding of what we are uh, thinking, these are the traditional technologies based on silicon. It is, in this case, polycrystalline solution and monocrystalline solution. That is, there is different uh, crystalline distribution inside with the, the photovoltaic, system, photovoltaic cell. And in this case, there is a, a single one crystal, and so the origin of the models is from a single, uh, the, the cell is from a single crystal. Really, what is the goodness of these uh, technologies? The goodness is that it's uh, well uh, affirmed, it is uh, operating from more than 30 years, so it's uh, surely the technologies that uh, we can uh, continue to use. But at the same time, we have other different solutions. For example, here is a, a perovskite uh, solar cell. It is a solar cell that uses different uh, materials for the sorry, a different material for the uh, uh, for the realization of a semiconductor. Uh, here, other kind of, uh, this is an uh, organic solar cell that is used uh, a, a solution instead of uh, uh, traditional uh, materials and give us some opportunity. For example, this is transparent with respect to the, the field and can be also uh, different colored. So we have the opportunity to color it. Uh, it's very, could be very interesting in, for the realization of some window there are at the same time, window, but also uh, models. This is a uh, chips technology that are different. One is uh, flexible. The problem uh, of the different technologies is also related to the sustainability of the technologies, the, the pollution that uh, our panels uh, determines when they speed. Uh, so, since the process it can be very different from the different technologies, we can have that a technology is of success or not, also according to the pollution that is generated. Here are an example of a transparent realization, a semi-transparent realization. Here is a, a tiles that can be put in the roof for the so integration of the, the of a flexible. Uh, solar cell in a uh, in, uh, rooftop. Uh, here's another example of uh, different technologies. Uh, well, today we are going to, towards the use of 
transparent or semi-transparent solution or bifacial solution that is the, uh, the panel uh, can be uh, irradiated from both sides of the uh, of the panel itself. So uh, we are uh, we we see in, in in time that the, the panel are posted on the rooftop or in uh, some structure in uh, uh, oblique way or in a horizontal point, but with if the, uh, we can exploit both sides, becomes very interesting also the possibility to use vertical mounted uh, panels. So we have to also to take into account a different approach. And uh, this is a glass, but really is a, a, a panel, so it's a transparent uh, photovoltaic technologies. And, uh, this has a real realization already installed one. If we want to take uh, account of what is the difference in different technology, what is the, the, the importance of a technology instead of another, we can see that in this, uh, if you want to make uh, a classification from the point of view of efficiency we have that the multi-junction solution multi-junction means that uh, we i don't describe the realization uh, um, panels but if you have a cell but you have to imagine that there is two semiconductors one near the other one okay if you put the several layer, that is several combination of semiconductor, you have for each layer an absorber, an, uh, a frequency that is absorbed, and so a spectrum in uh, the absorption. So multi-junction is the one with several layer, uh, but use always uh, uh, silicon-based technologies. Uh, so from the point of view of the efficiency, we have that uh, monocrystalline and multijunction is the best one, but also perskit is uh, clearly the very important. From the point of view of cost, we see that organic solar cells are very expensive and uh, have a very low, low uh, efficiency. But the, the point uh, that uh, give us uh, clearly uh, uh, advantages is related to the durability. So monocrystalline silicon power uh, people we know that are 20, 30 years of life, so are very effective from the point of view of the durability. The same is not true for the other technologies. This is one of the reasons because before to start a complete change in the technology we use, we have to take into account the durability of the product. The other, the term of flexibility is not related to the flexibility in the installation, but on the possibility to, to make curves, curves, curves uh, installation and so on, the, this realization of structure like this one or this one without any problem. This is related to the uh, thickness of the uh, solar cells itself. So this is uh, in order to understand that uh, there are different strategies that can be followed, but above all, the, some technology cannot be uh, abandoned because they are still important for the point of view of, uh, of, of from the point of view of production. Circular models. The circular models that uh, we show, uh, I show in this slide are the traditional one uh, models that uh, is one dive model. This is the, the so called double dive model that is clearly for so called. This is a, an uh, innovative structure that uh, I proposed in 2014. And this about no, 2016, sorry, and is related to the description of organic solar cell. He used different uh, diode, and the reason is because the shape of the, the EV house is very strange. 
from the mathematical point of view, what means uh, these uh, uh, are all quantities can can be related to the mechanism of the equation that can be described by means of keep uh, flow. And so we can write a correspondence between the current and the voltage at the end of these uh, uh, models. And so this is the equation. We can see this is a traditional exponential equation. Unfortunately, uh, there is an implicit equation. So uh, since uh, the, the, the voltages and the current is inside the exponential, it's not easy to find an explicit version. There is an explicit version we use for the function, but we know that uh, uh, it's not so effective. So many times it's better to use the implicit version instead to use the explicit one. The explicit one is interesting from the point of view of uh, um, modelization, that is, we can declare that there is an explicit solution of this equation, but Really, this explicit solution is not useful from the point of view of, of design. If you have a more than one dial, the situation clearly is a bit complicated. We have to add another. Um, uh, sorry, there is an error in this equation because these two are plus and not minus. Uh, okay, but we have to add another. Um, contribution due to the second diode, but uh, this means that it's not possible in this case to have an explicit representation of this uh, equation that is uh, explicit in terms of uh, the, the current is expressed in terms of the voltages and the, or the voltage expressed in terms of the current. It's clear that when we look at the first equation of this one, we have some parameter that is the resistance values. This is the series resistance. This is the shunt resistance. This is the parameters of the dial that are unknown parameters. We have to understand the values of this parameter. We have to estimate it or from the measurement or from the uh, data available from the data sheet by non factor. The same must be done in this case and clearly. Since in the first case, the number of parameters is only five, so this model is called five in this model. In the case of double diode, we have seven parameters, and so the, uh, it's more difficult to compute them. Uh, in order, we show later how we, we can do this from the theoretical point of view, we don't compute clearly. Yeah, it's not there the point that we want to discuss. What are the problem for, for example, for uh, organic solar cell? In organic solar cell, if you look at the, the curves, are very different with traditional curves. We have a, a changing in the shape. And uh, this, sorry, this changing the shape is related also to the uh, treatment of the cells. That is, in order to take into account the change in the shape, we have to introduce these different groups that allow us to describe perfectly the shape of this device. Clearly, the equation from the point of view of um, mathematical representation is very complicated. We have, in this case, uh, 10 parameters, so it's not so easy to identify, but uh, clearly, also in this case, it's possible to create an optimization or problem, a fitting problem, and to solve it. Clearly, so the difference between the models, this, this is can be considered a general. It's good for silicon-based uh, device. This is good also for silicon based devices, but it's good also for other technologies. But in some cases, it's better than silicon device, in some cases, it's worse. Uh, this is good for uh, perovskite and organic solar cell, not for, for in general, because, uh, because that it's too complicated 
So maybe it should be good as of uh, for uh, traditional technology, but it's too complicated, so it's not, it's not useful to adopt. But for uh, perovskite and for uh, organic solar cell, it works there. If we have uh, uh, multi-junction or bifacial solar cell, that is the, uh, the solar cell can be irradiated from both sides, we need to complicate also the model, because in that case, we need to take into account the relation of both sides. There are two different strategies that can be followed in this case. One is to use uh, a double dive model that is like this one, one in order to represent the one junction and the other one. And uh, Together near two different the one that model that is another solution. But from the point of view of, of engineering solution, the best way actually is only to use a single diet model, adding just a, another generation plan. This is in order to simplify the problem. Really, this is not the best way but it's the most used one. Uh, it's not the best way because uh, really we don't see in this representation because the only parameter where we see the expression of temperature is uh, the thermal um, voltage, but uh, really all the parameters have a dependence of temperature. When we have two, uh, two structures, two junctions, the temperature of the junction can be different. So, really, we cannot use a single that model to just generate an object to the sky. So, in my opinion, the best model is, uh, the, sorry, the best model is a double diod model, but uh, there is a study in, uh, in this, uh, about this argument, so we are trying to understand it or not. But if you want to, to to try to or give your contribution, surely for this technology, the contribution should be related to the use of double diving. Okay, before to discuss how we can uh, fit in the data, or we can solve the problems, uh, look at the uh, small signal models. Small signal model, this is the most simple model we can uh, build to represent a signal that is we can represent the effects of the junction like a, with a, a capacitance and we have again a shunt resistant and serial resistance. There is a problem, this uh, shunt resistance and this uh, serial resistance are related to the run of the uh, DC model. There is a very so absolutely different. In this case, uh, we need to put a lot of measurement because uh, if we will look at the, the, the equation coming from this model, the equation coming from this model uh, can be represented by means of uh, uh, this uh, diagram that is uh, a diagram we, where we plot the real part and the imaginary part of the impedance. Uh, take into account the variation with the uh, frequencies. So the CR resistance is given by this contribution that is the difference between the, uh, the measure point and the, uh, the origin point at frequency zero. When we go up with the frequencies, we have uh, that the, 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 the measurement that follow these curves, the red one, that is related to the uh, presence of uh, capacitance, uh, capacitance effect. When we reach, uh, theoretically, the infinite frequencies, the capacitance effect is uh, practically not, not more present, and we see only the parallel uh, effect. So, in uh, <coughs> We can have some consideration about the working point in order to build our model. So this is 
what should be the historically the measure left. Okay, what means identifying the the any models that is uh, uh, the C model or a C model from measure means that we have a, a procedure in which we try to modify the parameters that is the values of resistance, capacitance, and so on, in order to make the problem fitting with the measure. This uh, has been done uh, with success for the one that model. The, this procedure is, uh, is uh, very efficient, solved by, by the reduced form that I proposed together with Professor Riganti in 2014, but it's also solved in a very efficient way, also best than reduce one by the model proposed by Professor Toledo, Javier. And so it's a, it's a success also for your university to have this excellence in, for the solution of this kind of problem. Clearly, um, the, uh, there is no the same uh, easily way to solve the problem for double diode or for more diode problem. That is, uh, in uh, for a single diode model, we have uh, seen that all the methodology converges toward the same solution. So we can appreciate that there is an effective way to find a solution. You can choose the model, the the sorry, the algorithm. Any algorithm can be best performance with respect to another in time, terms of time, but all converge towards the solution. The same thing is not uh, actually true for the double diode model or a large diode model from multi diode models. So, in that case, there is also still an open problem from the magnetic point of view to deface it. Uh, here are some uh, an example of a uh, measurement uh, taken in uh, DC and uh, in small signal for a special uh, cell that is realized by using selenium and antimonium that are materials not commonly used for phototypes. This is uh, made at uh, CNR in Italy and uh, where we collaborate. Uh, uh, with this research center. And uh, if we look at the, the uh, curves, we see that we have uh, the DC curves that are described by traditional curves. You can see that it is a, a big noise, uh, but uh, it's uh, possible to, uh, to fit this curve without any problem by using our, uh, our approach. And these are instead the, the uh, the small signal models. Here yeah, you can see that there is a very difficult for small signal model because small, instead, these curves depends only on irradiance and temperature. But the small signal models depends also in the point we use to make the measurement. So, in this case, uh, with the terms bias, we indicate that we made the measurement with a fixed value of voltage. And you can see that the curves are extremely different. So it's not so easy to build a model that is good to, for all the bias point, for example, describe the behavior. As you can see, the radius is really different. And so the radius is related to the, uh, the it, it can be related to the values of CP but also to the value of LP. It's not a perfect uh, circumference, so it no, cannot be exactly uh, fitted. And so this problem from the point of view of modelization is another open problem. Or can be solved maybe using a more complex circuit with respect to the one presented here, but also this is not uh, so clear because uh, when we propose another model, we have to understand why we propose from the physical point of view another model. So this is justified by what we see when we combine the 
the Missouri event is justified by the, the shape behavior of the Missouri event. But another model is not so simple to propose. Okay. Okay, about the DC, um, measurement, I saw that there is no difficult to, to fit these cars. We have done it for different, in different operating points, but this will be different in advanced conditions. So it, it is quite a traditional problem. Even if the technology is really different, that is, this uh, uh, panel, so this cell was being by using antimonium. One is was used uh, uh, in the past for the realization of the of the glass of uh, photovoltaic panels. So it's uh, commonly used in uh, photovoltaic technologies. But in this case, we use it together with selenium in order to exploit these properties as a uh, um, dopant of the, the structure. Uh, but it's, it is uh, uh, it is a curve that that confirm that the one line model can be good for these technologies. When we look at, instead for the AC models, we see that the measurements are very complex. In this case, I, I show you only a specific measurement take uh, for a, a bias value. And you can see that from the, um, the measurement and the fitting data, are there is a good correspondence in the shape. This means that uh, really the model is uh, not so different from the, the circuit. Uh, the, the circuit model is not different, so different from the real value. So it's not justified a uh, uh, changing the model. Maybe since this, uh, uh, this is done, uh, these measurements are at different frequencies. So uh, the, the, the voltage is fixed, the current is fixed, and the only variable is the frequency. This means maybe that there is a dependence of the frequencies of the parameters. And uh, should be, it's not so easy to be taken into account because we know that we, it could propose a circuit uh, uh, representation because this circuit can be easily solved from the point of view of engineering. If we use a, a introduce a circuit component that have, for example, um, is a fixed delay and so on, it's not so easy to be introduced in simulator, so we lost the possibility to exploit better the uh, synthetic information given by uh, a circuit model. However, it's, there is a, a good correspondence, so we, we can try to better explain the things, but clearly it's also important to see what is the frequencies where there are more problems. In this case, the frequencies where there is more problems related to the uh, very high frequencies and in this case, uh, maybe a solution is to, to use a different approach that is avoided to try to fit these very high frequencies and limit a, limiting the fitting to a uh, number or lower uh, point. This is, uh, you have to consider that from the mathematical point of view, we, want to, we can solve a problem taking into account of all the information. But sometimes this is not very really useful. Oh, try to uh, exclude some information. In this case, we, if we exclude the information, sorry. If we exclude the information related to this part, maybe our fitting becomes better. And so we have a, a better representation. But this is a consideration from the mathematical point of view. It's not a concession from an engineering point of view where we are interested in and some data that is good for almost everything. Okay. Why uh, we take into account of these two different models? Because uh, we use, uh, I, 
that we are initially. We use uh, the C model for out of power prediction, but need also a C model to control six. So when we insert our uh, photovoltaic system inside a generation chain or generation chain of energy, clearly we have to take into account some aspects that are related to the conversion system. In traditional conversion the transformation system that there are the one that usually applied in our uh, house. So if you have a complex plant or in a very large complex plant, we have uh, the P2 power that go inside a DC, a C converter that is uh, direct current and uh, a C is uh, the alternate current system in such a way that you can directly connect your system in a secret. And this is done with a, a specific um, device that is an electrical inverter, so the conversion follows some specific rule with this specific. Different if you want to convert PV power in a DC-DC converter, it is adapted to the direct current values to another direct current values and in this is in order to uh, to use the energy to charge a battery or to have because we have a dc load it's important to understand that the procedure in which we control the mechanism are the same the circuits are very different, but we control this procedure by acting on some switch. It is turn on and turn off some switch. The circuits are different, but the procedure is the same. But the problem are really different because when we have this kind of conversion system, we have to follow rules that are a bit uh, more complicated respect to the other one. We, uh, as I said before, this is traditional one that is well working. This is the new uh, interested uh, idea that is the possibility to exploit this uh, conversion system also for a uh, situation where it's important to, aim to have a battery that is charged from DC DC converter or to have a lot of specific elemental basis. In our idea that the, the photovoltaic system can be integrated usually in energy community system and in other energy harvesting system, this is the solution that we, are, we want to investigate because it's a bit more complex than the other one. Uh, so when we want to investigate this kind of conversion, we can have uh, the possibility to image that we have a two step that is uh, a first DC, DC converter that is in order to, uh, to, to charge the battery. In this case, it is represented by a conventional battery, by a capacitor battery. Then you can image here that there is uh, or a super cap or a battery or, or any kind of system that we need to charge. And another chain is from, oh, sorry, from the battery to the load, okay? So if we put together, if we avoid to use this double chain, a still image that there is direct the load here, we are not able to guarantee the correct operating of the photovoltaic system because we need we have we need to explore in order to explore the, the voltage system generation we need to follow the maximum power point that is the maximum point of generation if uh, we see these curves these curves the maximum power point is in this point that is for this voltage but if i fix the voltage in the uh, side of the photovoltaic plant i cannot fix uh, at the same time, the, sorry, fix at the same time the voltage on the load because I have only uh, degree of freedom. 
So this kind of compression system is not good for uh, the single for uh, for the good experiment of uh, the CDC converter, and so we use a double a double system. That is, we have a system we charge the battery, and then another system with is uh, give the energy to the load. This guarantee a more efficiency of the uh, complex chain, but clearly is uh, more complicated to set up. In order to set up this in a very accurate way, we have to fix some uh, rules. And uh, still, the San Juan Dark model is useful to do this because uh, very easy. If we represent the source by means of a single dial model, and we represent the converter like a, a sort of ideal uh, transformer that is a, 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 a black box that uh, have uh, all the uh, power in the uh, first port given in the second port so all, all the power going inside go to the other side and in order to do this, there is uh, there will be a coefficient between the voltage gain and the current given. If I gain Q in voltage, I lost Q in the current values. And so we have some equation that describes perfectly this mechanism. When we put this one together with the other rules related to the conversion, we have uh, uh, taken into account clearly the, the defect in the device and the, the parasitic effect. We have some specific mathematical rules that we have to be followed. If we put all together, sorry, if we put all together, this is the representation of the rules that allow us to define the values of the dynamics of the, the choosing of the frequencies to be used in, uh, in the uh, phenomena. Uh, in the action of the the turn off turn off of the of the, the switches putting all this together we see that the voltage on the capacitance follow a uh, curves that is a sort of uh, it's very similar to um hyperbole right? hyperbolic curves and uh, some feasible points are good for the realization of the uh, converter, some other are not good. So, for example, here we represent some point with the red that are outside the house that uh, correspond to a, a load that is not able to be used. And other points that are instead in, in uh, blue are points that are feasible for the uh, building of the discovery. So there is a mathematical relation that allows us to set up perfectly the uh, dimension of the uh, parameter, the, the dimension of the uh, device that we have to use in order to guarantee a correct, a correct operating. It's important to note that here is uh, this is. Uh, in the axis, there is the gain in the current and the gain in the voltage with respect to the voltages in the current of the uh, photovoltaic uh, modules. And so, again, the math is useful to do this. Uh, okay, if you need a further explanation, or we, we can discuss it later in the question time. Another point that you want, so all this in order to understand that the electrical characterization, the electrical, the building of the electrical circuits models are very effective because allow us to, to do all this. Clearly, it allows us also, also, also to do other things. For example, if we consider the, the integration of the tax in the uh, buildings that is the use of building with uh, rooftop 
tile with uh, windows and with uh, uh, vertical shaped uh, um, uh, panels with cover or all the surface, we have that uh, it's interesting to monitor the operation of these panels. In order to monitor the operation of these panels, we can explore it uh, again a measurement equipment that is very simple. In order to the, the quantities that the, the determine the performance of the panels are clearly bold and current, but this can be easily measured. Temperature of the modules, but clearly the more, most important is the irradiance that is all the radiation in the panels. Uh, uh, we are lucky also in this case because the uh, modeling of like by using one dark model allow us to write a mathematical relation in which if we know the temperature, the voltage and the current are able to evaluate what is the irradiance. Really, this formula can be easily implemented also in a, a low cost equipment. So we implement it in a microcontroller and build this equipment. That is equipment that measure the current and the voltages is alimented by the same panels. It can be also used here a small cap, a super cap or a small battery in order to guarantee that when the panels is off, the sensor is uh, working. And uh, we, have, uh, we have used in this case uh, microcontrollers that has a Wi-Fi uh, integrated structure, so we can transmit in Wi-Fi the data and by measuring the temperature by uh, a, a specific equipment, this is a low cost sensor, we have the possibility to monitor the, uh, the irradiance. Here we show some results, that is the comparison between the measure and the irradiance by an equipment, a pedagogical, and the measure the irradiance by this equipment, and we can see that there is a perfect correspondence that is, uh, the error is lower than 5%. So we are able to uh, understand better the, the behavior. And this is uh, very useful in order to estimate the uh, performance, but also to understand if some things happen that is wrong. For example, a panel is fault. If it is, if we have two panels, one near the other, and uh, we sense that there is a difference in the production, maybe one of the two panels at fault. So this uh, very economical uh, realization, you have to consider that the microcontroller is about five euros. Oh, sorry, sorry I'm finished. And uh, the other sensor is, uh, all, all, all this cost uh, about 20 euros. So it's not, not so expensive. Clearly, this uh, allowed to correct the irritation also in the case of shadowing, uh, but also we can use it the distribution in uh, uh, in a power plant, a larger power plant. So the monitoring is only related to wind and the photosites, but also in uh, for a large plant. And uh, we also uh, explore it uh, uh, an algorithm in order to reconstruct a, a radiance map by using uh, the data available from this, uh, this data. Very, it's easy to memorize the data in other ways to exploit and elaborate such a, in a, in a successive moment. Uh, the last point, I'm going uh, a bit faster, but uh, we can discuss uh, later in the question session. What happens if we want to instead consider a large situation in which we have a very large number of devices and a number of buildings and we want to understand what is the better solution in terms of storage and photovoltaic installation in order to explore the energy, the, the, energy um, the energy production, but also to exploit the, the a solution based on 
uh, renewable energy communities. In this case, this is a case study uh, developed in uh, Roma in Testaccio. It's a uh, uh, very large uh, zone in Rome. And uh, we have, uh, in this case, uh, about 40, uh, 45, uh, 45 buildings in which we are able to install photovoltaics. We know exactly the data in terms of consumption energy of these for these um, uh, buildings. We know exactly what is the, the surface that we can use to put photovoltaics plant. And also we have an estimation of the storage that we can use. In this case, we make use of PVGs, that is a, a, a software available in, uh, for free that allow to define for all the region in the world what is the estimation the production for a power plant installed according to a specific approach. Very even use a um, specific model like the one previous to present, but use a generic model, a generic model that is easy to use and it also be, be used take into account the, the possibility to use a storage system or, and so on. So you have just to identify what is the region of your, uh, of your plant and what is the characteristic of the plant in terms of uh, shape, uh, uh, inclination, and so on, and then uh, you have uh, the possibility to evaluate the result. Here is the algorithm that we use in order to uh, set up all the procedures and estimate what is the best uh, solution to be uh, to be adopted for this uh, uh, zone. And uh, in particular, we're interested in estimating the size of energy storage system that to be implemented because we uh, start with the idea that we cover all the possible surface with photovoltaic plant, photovoltaic device. So we need to estimate what is the storage. And uh, we make some uh, different analysis taking into account that the power, the surface useful is about 373 square meters. And uh, so the power uh, useful is about uh, 31 uh, kilowatt. And uh, so we shape three different storage system for taking into account the same size of the producer power. It's uh, to consider that Rome have an insulation that is not the one like Edge, for example, in Edge, the same plant produces more energy. So it's important to create the, the plant in the, the correct region. We have also information about the annual consume of uh, energy for the uh, energy inside the building, it's both for thermal uh, and for other, for all the operating of the, the building, and so this is some test. Uh, uh, in this case, we, we show the comparison. If we use a uh, storage of 31 kilo, kilowatt, we have that uh, the batteries go full in 48% uh, in, uh, of the day, and uh, is completely um, empty in the 7% of the day. In, uh, in, uh, 100% of the day, that is, all the energy storage go, uh, go used. The, if we use a large storage system, the situation is uh, worst, so it's not useful to employ a storage system that is large than uh, the one now generated by the available surface for this specific knowledge. Okay, I will very fast in the last part, but I think the last part. Okay, uh, thank you very much for, for the talk. Very interesting. And 
I think you to you provided an, an overview of the of the subject without entering into technical details, and I think that people who is not uh, expert in the subject appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to to make. Uh, well, I have a lot of questions, of course, <laughs> but just just one minute because I, it is interesting in the sense of that uh, we are we are working in modeling, and uh, I, I I I like a lot uh, this uh, uh, proposal you did uh, in, in 2016 from uh, organic sales. In, yeah. Yes. And uh, well, um, my question is: uh, Is the single diet model by itself? Uh, capable of uh, modeling this uh, the, the behavior of, of the organic cells. I, I mean, maybe uh, the parameters of, obtained with the single diode model uh, are mathematically good for fitting the cars, but maybe uh, uh, the physical sense of, of these parameters or, or these parameters okay. have no physical okay. sense. From, no, 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 from the if you look at the curves, in this case, you have to you have, uh, usually look at it with uh, different uh, representation that is uh, more similar to this one. That is uh, positive current uh, and voltage. In this case, the current uh, is negative because we choose a different uh, uh, best for uh, the direction for the current. If you look, in this part that is before the open circuit voltage, the behavior is very similar. It is, uh, it look like a, a one diet model itself. The problem is uh, in uh, the correspondence of uh, open voltages. So, uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, maybe in the evaluation of the mass power point, one that model is not so great because uh, this part should be good, but this part uh, the, the the slope is very different. So it, I I don't test it, but I think that is not so good. Another thing see that uh, we exploit also this model in order to understand what happens when the thermal situation change. This is a, a, a curve for a specific thermal situation. That is, the cell was uh, taken at the temperature of 120 Celsius degree for five minutes. And then uh, this is an annealing process, and then it's left uh, to stay uh, down, uh, to return to ambient uh, temperatures. And then we made the measurement. But if you take a lot of at uh, an annealing process with a different time and a different temperature, this is that the, the S shape of the cone is change. Change becomes more evident or less evident. So it's important to understand that the, uh, the, the Sikuda model here is not only important to estimation of temperature, but also to understand what happens. And so uh, I think that if when this technology will be well defined, we don't need more to use this model. But in this phase, uh, I think that it's uh, it's useful for understanding. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I'm sorry because I, I think I, I should uh, uh, ask uh, people if, if uh, somebody want to to do a question and I I. Uh, I go okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Question or comment. Uh, or maybe uh, at home. Yeah, yeah. Two questions. Oh, sure. One related with with when you are explaining the the dynamic modeling of the cells, you talk about the bias point. Yeah. This, I, I, what do you mean with the bias point? The the voltage, uh, the, the, the measurement, the, the, or the temperature, or no, 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 or no, no, no. No, we, we the temperature is fixed, so we we make the measurement at different voltages. The temperature is as in this case that we take inside the structure. The temperature is fixed. The the radiation is fixed. We regulate the temperature, 
and uh, we make the different bias according to the water. This is at zero okay. voltage. Uh, is a positive and negative because usually we make this measurement uh, also in negative uh, or negative voltages. Is um, this are done by physics, so they are interested in all the profile and also to verify if there is a very bad phenomena from the these materials. Okay, and this is related with my second question because, as you know, the you, you use the DC model for uh, output power prediction, or also you use the DC model for for the irradiance prediction uh, in the in the sensor. Okay, so you you at the end you trust in in some equation that relate the parameters with temperature and irradiance. Yeah, and you know that in the literature we have many equations that. Uh, yes, but okay, but we use. Uh, you have to consider that uh, our first approach in the evaluation of the irradiance uh, by using measurement was starting by using uh, uh, neural networks. So we use a black box, take measurement, and, uh, and develop a, a, a patent about uh, the use of this uh, solution. Uh, again, together with Professor Gatti. And uh, when uh, we evaluated this, we uh, had a good result. At a certain point, our colleague from uh, University of Denver, uh, is uh, Fernando Mancilla, uh, published a work together with other others. And I look at the two articles, see, but sorry, you, there was a, a, a wrong in the article because the, the equation can be easily solved. And so we noticed that this one by using the, mo the model of the SOTO, the, the model one. We try to implement the model of the SOTO in, uh, in a microcontroller with uh, the same data, and we uh, see that the error is uh, comparable or lower than the one by neural networks. So this is a direct formula. The model of the SOTO is well known, and so we continues to use this one instead of use uh, the, the neural networks approach. This is why originally I told that if the model is good, it's not necessary to use neural networks. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. Thank you. Oh, yes. I have one question related to the energy community. So, oh, yeah, sure. Is when you have told that you have a data from a neighborhood of Roma, it's maybe it's true. Yeah, and yeah. you have the data construction and data production of the of the neighborhood. Yeah, and you have get the, the results from this from this data. Yeah. Have you compared or have you another data sets uh, to make a standard? Or do you know if there are because we are looking for it? A standard data set no, of no, production. No, unfortunately, there is a standard data set for comparison of okay. the system, and this is one of the uh, only the problem which is very difficult to set up the number community because uh, we, we can only suggest some solution, but the solution is uh, not uh, really uh, usable because of the solution is based on the some specific case, okay. and uh, there is also no possibility to have a, a, a database of uh, data that allow to make tests. Yeah. So it's really an uh, open problem. So. Um, because uh, it would be very nice to, to share your yeah, data sure, sure, sure. to our system. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a very good point to, to make different yeah, Yes, uh, we, we are building, we are building the, uh, a small energy community system in the neighborhood of the university. If the data will be collected correctly, in the future, they will be available. Data for production and construction of each tower. There is maybe some opportunity with uh, EMEA, that is the Another Research Center from Italy, but I'm not sure that. Uh, Okay. Google talk about. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Um, I was wondering about you. First of all, thank you for your for oh. It's quite interesting. Um, 
Uh, you were talking uh, about things that uh, all our colleagues have been working for a long time, so that's very nice to to see that uh, the people it's collaborating with uh, some other colleagues in, uh, here abroad. So, but I, I was wondering that in your last uh, part of your talk, you were talking about the residential or large PV systems. Yeah. And my question is, how is the importance of the cells in this world when you have many things around? You have wiring, you have protections, you have many other things that can interfere in your global estimation because at the end yeah. of the day what we try to do is to balance what is the energy you can provide to the system and then you, the energy you can store it and the, because maybe you are talking about the prices of the energy and something like this but the models only focus on the solar cells Maybe are not enough to model the complex reality. Clearly, clearly the, when you try to, to describe a, a big regeneration of our energy system, and in this case, I present some data, some results related to the integration of cars. But when we tested the whole system, uh, we put together the information about the Solar radiation also to take into account the thermal behavior like of the device of the buildings. And for this case, we use the software that is, uh, I don't present it here because there is no, no time. So I, I initially, I, I think, oh, we can discuss also is Energy Plus. Energy Plus is a software that allows us to describe the device for the temperature. Of view, the meetings from the temperature point of view, the group, and so you also to take account the uh, exposition of the device in order to take account all the factors. How is the percentage of the contribution of the model of the solar array of the solar cell in the complete system? Yes, it's, uh, okay. the, the idea, the, uh, I think that uh, it's uh, still important because. We have to change our idea of system energy system. That is, if we follow the old paradigm of energy system, where there is no problem if we lost some some parts of energy, there is no it's very important. But if you want to exploit also uh, the photovoltaic system as an energy harvesting system, it is a window. For example, suppose that this window is. Uh, realized by uh, means of uh, new technologies. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he is able to uh, produce energy not only by the illumination received uh, from the outside, but also by illumination received inside. So, what can be the contribution? It's minimal, but this contribution related to a new paradigm in the energy. Uh, Management can be important. For example, we can use this to uh, to feed a, a sensor for the temperature, or for the irradiance, or for the presence of the people that allow us to uh, turn off the, the light and so on. So it's not the idea to use this approach for the only the energy production, but also for the energy management to uh, to feed some sensor that. Need a specific connection in order to be to be used. So but it's a different policy. It's not. It's, it's, not, it's not. The contribution in a, for the energy is given by the rooftop uh, plan. No, but I mean when we're not talking about this, I'm, I'm thinking. Okay, we are modeling the solar cells, but we are why we don't know <coughs> the protections or yeah, the wire, no, or no. even the, the okay, okay, but we. We, we take into account of this in, uh, but really it's, a, it's more easy to take account this with PVGs because in PVGs you take into account what is the loss due to the people, what is the loss of this general contribute. But in that, case, in that case, you are not related to single equipment but a plant with generate a large amount of energy. Yeah. 
Okay, we can follow in discussing in the in the lunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a very interesting, but uh, I think we got we must finish it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Antonino, and thank you to the audience for coming. And, and that's thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you.